Quick reminder that there will be a reception after the panel in the atrium, so uh, stick around after the panel, come hang out. But it is my great honor to be able to welcome to the stage um, star of the original film, and it has been announced that they'll be appearing later in the series, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> This is not my seat. I believe this is. Well, how about that show? What do you think? An amazing job by everyone. I'm going to introduce the people we have today for your uh, little talk back after the screening. Melanie Field, who stars as Joe. Come on up, Mel. You remind me of someone in this. I don't know who. I don't know who. Kelly McCormick, who stars as Jess. The gorgeous Shantae Adams, who stars as Max. Desta Tedros Ref, the executive producer. Will Graham, co creative and executive producer, co creator. Maybelle Blair, making news all over the world. Maybelle Blair, come on, Maybelle. I want a baseball cane when I'm older, too. I'm gonna get one, damn it. There we go, you got it? All right, come on, Maybelle. Give me a high five there, sister friend. Way to go. Very proud of you. Okay, and um, this wonderfully talented woman who we all know and love, and look what she did her first go out after Broad City. Unbelievable. Abby Jacobson, co creator, executive producer, series star. Dun, da, da, da. Wow, well, first of all, congratulations to everyone. What a wonderful accomplishment. How does it feel, Ab, to get to see it on a big screen? It's uh, quite surreal, and uh, I haven't ever been able to watch the second one with an audience. It's so interesting to hear reactions, and uh, <laughs> sometimes they're exactly where I thought they'd be, and sometimes they're really not, guys. <laughs> You guys are being bad. <laughs> and that's what you want them to be, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, we see that there's a little homage that you put certain characters, like, tip their hat towards the first go-round. How did that, was that put in on purpose? Yeah, I think, uh, we, do it, we do it throughout, um, but we wanted to nod to the film. I mean, we, we love the film it was so important to us growing up it still is and you guys did a thing that did not need to be remade and we wanted to reimagine it and not to the thing that started or not started at all but really inspired us in a big way so yes there's like all these little nods there's little easter eggs and they continue throughout the series too now um maybelle how you doing well, I'm still living, and I'm on this side of the dirt. All right! I was watching my CNN, and there was a big story about you. You got a big announcement for everyone? Well, yeah, you know, um, after being 95 years old, I thought it was time to kick the door open and come out. Yeah. How about that? Well, when you watched uh, the first movie, did you think, well, they left out that whole part about their lives and the romantic relationships between the women. Did you think that was missing from the first film? Oh, yeah. Uh, naturally, I felt that uh, it should come out, but that they couldn't come out, so you guys could bring it out and told who the real story was. But now it's open, and here we are, and uh, all you people should never be afraid again. I'm not. Excellent. It was funny because I always 
thought my character, Doris Murphy, was gay, that she was in love with May, and that was sort of what I was playing as an actress. And the scene in the bus where I was saying, oh, I, I never felt like a real girl, but now I do, and there's a lot of us. After we shot the first take of it, Penny goes, Rosie, don't do that so gay. <laughs> And I said, Penny, I'm just reading the words that they wrote. I'm not making anything up. They're like, okay, we'll do it again, but you know, do it again. And then I did it every take the same exact way. And sometimes she'd go, that was better, thank you, that was better. But I don't think she had any interest in sort of exposing that part of, of the lives of the women. And as the executive producers, what, what did you guys think? Will and Desta, uh, that that was an important feature for the film, uh, for the series, rather. I think for us, I mean, like Abby said, we, we grew up loving the film. And it meant, I mean, as a little queer kid who played a lot of years of Little League Baseball very badly uh, and cried uh, the entire time, there was something about the movie that kind of communicated that it was okay to be on that field and be queer, even if it didn't say it straight out. So I think when we first started thinking about the series, it was really a question of looking to the real stories. And you kind of had the feeling that there was more underneath there and, um, and getting to talk to Maybell and others about their experiences and, and hear the stories of not just the hard things, but also of finding a community and finding a team and finding joy and finding other people like you. I remember one of the first times we talked to you said, we said, what was it like to find all these people? And you said, it was a party. It was a real party, believe me. I didn't think I was the only one in, in living that was gay. I did have a little episode with my high school uh, friend. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and you I did. Tell it, yeah, I tell it some there more. There she goes. She's a player. Yeah, the truth came out. But anyway, I, I couldn't hardly wait to get back there. And when I went back there, I had known some people and I didn't realize they were playing ball. And they took me to a gay bar. And I'm telling you, I walked in and they said, Mabel, what the heck are you doing here? I says, well, I'm one of you. <laughs> so anyway, that's what happened. And it was the most wonderful time of my life. Oh, how beautiful. I'm so touched to hear that. Yeah, and, and um, I think that's the spirit that that was kind of one of the moments where we really knew what we wanted the show to be. Oh yeah, and I also think to the movie, like I think that's the opportunity of being able to tell this story now. Is like when the movie came out, just having a sports movie, a sports movie about women was revolutionary. Yeah. Like, and I think that that is it. The the stories that we're telling were the stories. We're able to go a deeper layer, and that's the opportunity of being able to tell those stories now, where there is more of. Um, acceptance in an audience to hear and that we can bring a larger story. Yeah, beautiful. At the end of League of Their Own, there's a scene where there's an African-American woman who throws the ball, and hence the storyline, which is so beautiful, so touching, and, and you are really great in it. Are you a ball player? Um. <laughs> oh! Okay, but you can't tell, honey. You can't tell. Wow, really on the spot there. Uh, <laughs> You know, who isn't a ball player? <laughs> I, okay, so I, I did say that I was in my audition. Um, but, uh, then I, uh, they quickly, we all learned that I wasn't when we went to practice for the first time. But we got to go through a very rigorous and beautiful baseball camp led by Justine Siegel who um, is the first woman to ever be employed as a coach in the MLB. And so she came in and worked with us for a couple months before we shot the pilot and then again before we shot the season. And she also brought in uh, her actual female baseball players that she coached since they were little. They now, some of them are playing professional ball to this day. And so they got to come in and work with us. Uh, and we went through a very rigorous boot camp. And after that, I am proud to say I have a strong right arm. Way to go. Thank you. Now, um, I don't know the name of the actress who plays your best friend in that. What's her name? Bemisola Akumelo. Hysterically funny. Yeah. Yes. She's so great. Tell her I thought she was just wonderful. I sure will. All right, good. She's also a writer on the show. Oh, how great. And also British. And also British and Very improvising British. a lot of her jokes in an American accent. Wow. Super genius. 
So talented. So gifted. That's amazing. You ever, it's always shocking when you see somebody playing American and then they go on a talk show and then hey, you can't do that anymore. You get canceled, right? British people. Rosie hates British people. <laughs> Eat me. Okay. Um, so uh, Kelly and and Melanie, you guys fit right in. I when I watch the movie, the series, I keep calling it a movie. I see you guys as the the real ball players in our movie. Like you would have fit right in there. Yeah, we're pretty good. We're yeah, good. you're damn good. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. This team. Yeah, we turn it on. You're a singer. <laughs> She's an incredible voice. She can sing anyone under the table. I literally don't know how to turn it on. Okay, well we can share. Okay. Hello. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we worked really hard to learn how to play baseball, Rosie. Yeah. You hadn't played either? I played softball in grade yeah. school. I was not very good. Um, but for my audition, they were like, oh, you know, you, we're going to want to see you like do some baseball stuff. So I went to the batting cages. And I practiced for so long that and I didn't have gloves on that my hands started to bleed. And then I was like, I can't go to the audition now because I'm not going to be able to hold the, hold yes. the bat. But it worked out. Wait, Mel, tell the story about the game. The bat. Oh, shit. That we then put in the show. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were, in, um, we were in baseball training for the pilot. So this was when we all first met and we all got together. And yeah, we were doing like a, a batting practice. And um, we were using these old bats, like the actual bats from back then. And I, I was up at that and I hit the ball and the bat broke. And, and it was this like epic moment. And then Abby's like, we're putting it in. We're putting it in the script. Just for context, we were all out in the field playing the game and we all ran in. Like she won the like, I, like, I we're all it up or something. Big, 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 but we're like really good at baseball. I mean, like I played baseball a bit and many sports, but like we, when we came, when we all came together, we were like, okay, we're doing this. But by the end of it, we were throwing catch, like playing catch, like between takes or whatever on the field and we're damn good. Like, we're, we're good. Makes a difference. When, uh, when we did the movie, I would go to the batting cages too in Van Nuys, and I would see like Daryl Hannah, you know, Julianne Moore, Julia Roberts, and I was like, listen, pretty woman, you might want to hold the thin end of the bat. Good luck out there. Let me know when you can do this, Julia. Not to be mean, but you know, there's only one thing I could do better than Julia Roberts, and that's baseball. So, so there you have it. Uh, was it all you dreamed doing this, Ab? Was this what you had in your mind when you sat down with me and Nobu when you told me you were going to do this? The one time I've been to Nobu was with Rosie O'Donnell. That was a, that was a night. Um, that was a night. Uh, you know what? I don't even know when. The, I told you about it way. Will and I were like just working. This was like 2018, I think. And I was so nervous that it was like brought up at dinner. And I was like, well, how much for us he gonna think I'm doing the movie? And I was, I think it's changed so much throughout, you know, we pitched this in 2017 and I think it's changed and morphed. And I, so what I, what Will and I initially talked about, I think is so in there, but I, I think it's, I think it's way, better than what I ever, like, I, every single person that came on throughout the process, including you, sort of threw their hearts into it and made it something I don't think, like, I think I was like, we can do this and it's going to be this, but I, I really feel so proud of it and I love the stories and the characters that we're portraying uh, in this show and it's, it's kind of far surpassed what I think I was telling you about. At Nobu. Right. She's like, I'm gonna make a gay league of their own. I'm like, good luck with that bitch. No. But, <laughs> but she fucking did it. Look what she did. I hear it out fast. Woo! So Maybell, do you have a story of uh, is it like what, what did you have to go to the learn how to be more of a woman uh, classes and did they try to do that to all of you guys? Well, uh, I came in a little after that, but they sure did work on a few of them, I'll tell you. And you know what? It did help a couple of us. But uh, 
Anyway, how the world did you really love this movie? That's not very loud. You tell them. I know, Rosie, we got to straighten them out, don't we? Yeah. No, on second thought, no. <laughs> you and I couldn't do that. I don't think so. I don't think so either. We didn't give them a hell of a try, though, would we? <laughs> So how has Amazon been to you? Excellent. <laughs> Say excellent. Yeah, they've been excellent. Uh, I've seen a lot of promos and a lot of support for the film, a lot of articles, a lot of press. It's really been, I think, really wonderful. Yeah, I think to your, what you just said about we're making a queer league of their own and you're like, in how you quoted yourself, good luck, bitch. Um, uh, they let us do that. Yes. Uh, in 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 exactly the way that we intended to and wanted to, and I think that is a that's that shows how um, they let us tell their this a lot of their like real stories in a really authentic way, and that's uh, that's all you can ask for. In a, yeah, in a and they've been incredibly support it's easy i think when you're doing a thing like this to try to be like that's good that you want to do that but maybe just take like one step backwards yeah, yeah. and not do it um quite as much and they were instead a lot of the time telling us to go a little further um and um encouraging us to be authentic and it's pretty amazing to have uh that behind you yeah How's it been with anybody getting recognized? I know you are already getting recognized, you guys, in the, get anybody going, are you gonna be in that show? I saw the trailers. Laughing, <laughs> laughing, that's funny, Chantel. No. <laughs> Actually, if you could recognize uh, us on our way out, yeah. uh, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, my mom's pretty obsessed yeah. with me. Yeah. Your mom is? Good, yeah, mom. good. Stop it. We did an event in Rockford and, um, <laughs> and Abby and Darcy and Shantae and Bemi Space were on a food truck. And it was honestly as if it was the most exciting thing that Abby and Darcy and Shantae and had ever Our seen. Faces were on up. Yeah. <laughs> there was that's like, pretty big. That's, that's big. That's big. That they had their face on a food truck. Like, <laughs> the four of us. I know, sure. It was like, hold on. I remember you were like, they serve hot dogs, and they were like, we serve vegan dogs, and Shantae flipped out. It was like, yeah, I, I can't even. She's, like, Shantae, she's vegan. Line for the picture. I'm like, hold oh, on. Yeah. Vegan hot dog. No, it was like a really cool thing to see, an experience. Yeah. Rosie, I'm curious, when you guys were making the movie, were you aware that there was a big queer story underneath it, or, or what did you think about it? Well, I definitely thought there was, because I met the women, you know, before we started. We met the women, and I was like, beep, 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 beep. Everywhere I looked, I was beeping, you know? And there was Penny in, like, her Knicks shirt with her sports shirt and her tummy pack that she would wear, and every day at 4 o'clock, she'd scream, Bacon! Someone bring me bacon! And they'd run out with four trays of bacon for her to eat. But you know, I mean, I think that I think that Penny, in her life, and who I love very much, and I'm, she's very responsible for my entire career, so I will always love her for that. But you know, she didn't want to go in that topic. I think too much in her life, or too much in anyone's life. It was sort of not her thing. And she was always nice. She would always say to me, you know, oh, how's um, uh, Kelly? Yeah, Kelly. How's Kelly? <laughs> I'm like, well, we've been married 10 years now. Okay, so it's good. It's gonna be going. You know, that was way back then. We're now divorced. But um, at the time, it was going okay. But... <laughs> Does it even matter? What am I doing? I'm pretending like this is a stand-up gig and you've all paid to see me. They said, would you come host? I said, I never leave the house. There'll be a crowd, I'll be there. And the doors are closed. We have Dunkin' Donuts coming out in a minute. This will be a two-night event. <laughs> Any stories you guys want to tell about when you were shooting? Anything that comes to mind that just... Um, I, I mean, I was recalling with Abby that <clears throat> that scene with Dove 
where she's like, please have my ball. And he's like, yeah, kid. She, she's like, cool, I'll see you on the field. I'm not going to act Abby because only she can do that. But anyway, she's, so she runs out of the locker room and we're all in the locker room and she absolutely fails because we all had cleats on because that's what you play when you know, you're playing baseball. And on the slippery floors, we all kept wiping out. And then, so she just went, she was like, slides, and she stands up, and she goes, did you get it? Did you get the slide? And they were like, no, we didn't get it. So what they didn't get it. I fell so hard, like a full banana. And like, you know, everyone's so, it's like the worst. Everyone's so, like, and I was like, did they get it? It would have been very funny. It would have been, 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 been a great been button to that scene. the best button of that scene. Damn it. Maybe they'll pick it up again and we'll write it into the show. Yes. <laughs> I follow sure. that um, in every single thing I do, I think. So we had sneakers from that point on. In no more cleats. Get them flying the sneakers. Take the cleats off. No cleats. I also just think during filming, there was a lot of moments. We talked about this. That was like, it's not a specific moment, but, but there were lots of moments because it's such a queer show and like half the cast is black and like we're exploring queerness and intersectionality. Just moments where you're just like, I can't believe we get to do this. Like I can't believe we're sitting here telling stories this way and getting to bring this on screen through this sort of beloved and honored film. And I think just, I wanted to say the, the, the comment you had made about the press of that, that the show is getting, so much that is a testament to the reach of the movie. Like I love the, I mean, I'm a, a black queer softball player. I love the movie. It, uh, like it spoke to my soul and I felt seen in a, in a way that I think a lot of other people did too. But like just the people when I talk about the, the show about and who love the film, like I think I told you, my wife is German and her male best friend in Germany is like, I love that movie. <laughs> he, can't, he can't wait for the show. And I think that that is just a testament yeah. to how. No, and we would never be here without you guys and we would never be here without Penny. So we owe you guys so much. Fun for Penny Marshall. There you go, Penn. It's hard to believe that it was 30 years ago, and I just turned 60, so my, it was funny. My little son never saw the movie. He's 22, and he called me up, and he said, oh, I was at Jimmy's house, and there was this movie on, and you were like a teenager, and you were talking like you were Sylvester Stallone. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. It was like... First of all, I was 30, and that's the money that you were swimming in that pool! God damn it! You respect that movie! And your mother sounding like Rocky. But we actually, Abby and I talked to Penny um, before she passed away, and, uh, and asked her, sort of told her roughly what we were thinking about doing um, with the show, and asked her about the scene where the African-American woman, who is sort of roughly based on Mamie Peanut Johnson, throws the ball and she was like I wanted to tell that story but there was no way to do it and that was my way of sort of nodding and and in some ways I think that also did open the door for us to look at um, uh, uh, at Max's character and her world do you want to talk a little bit about like kind of where the character came from yeah so Max is actually inspired by three women Tony Stone Mamie Peanut Johnson as he just mentioned and Connie Morgan where, and they are, all three of them played in the Negro Leagues. And up until April of this year, they were the only women that have played major league baseball, have played professional baseball on a major league level. Yet we don't know their names, and we should. And so the fact that we were able to do this show and bring to life a character that's inspired by these women is, it, it just, it means so much to so many different communities, especially women who are in sports. And so, yeah, it's just an honor to be able to stand up here and say that I got to play this character. So there will be a season two, yes? When do you find out? Amazon is here tonight, and, yeah. okay. and we love them, and I'm a prime member of Amazon. I order at least twice a day. Tonight's the night, let say you. What F is here, I think. <laughs> What's the date that you guys um, premiere? August 12th? August 12th. August 12th. And um, we're gonna, what night is that? It's Friday. Friday nights. Yeah. Excellent. Pop your popcorn, get your drinks. Yeah. Friday night. Friday night's the way to go, definitely. Well, listen, I've been, uh, 
honored to, to be asked to do this. I was honored when you asked me to play a small part, and um, I'm in episode seven, so um, you might want to put your DVR at six. I'm totally in six. You'll remember me in seven because I had such a wonderful portrayal in six that I'll feel like I'm in seven. My spirit lingers. Even before you come in, there's an essence. There's an essence, yes, of me. Too much me. Yeah, but, but Ruby um, is incredible in the show, and if you love the movie, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see what she does. Well, I can't wait to um, to watch the whole thing. I think it's brilliant what you've done, and as a gay person, I'm very proud to be a part of it and to be here and to see what you've done with this beautiful, loved film that we've had around for 30 years. To take it and to do this is is an homage and an honor, and it, it's wonderful to be able to see it. So thank you. I feel like, I, I think I speak for everyone that to hear that from you feels so important to us having made it, that you would be in it, that you would feel that way, and that just means the world, so coming from you. Well, thank you, Abby Jacobson. All right, well, I think that's all we got for tonight. How long do these usually go? Because I got like 30 more minutes. You know, my kid is a kindergartner, and uh, no. <laughs> but really, guys, we come out August 12th, and Mabel, what do you want to tell them uh, about the show? You mean the League of Their Own? <laughs> it's a wonderful show, and uh, you get your fannies and get their but press your buttons and get going on it because it's going to be fantastic. Hey, Rose, you got to tell you something. Go ahead. First time I ever saw you was at Stokey when we were uh, they were trying to cast the girls for uh, the movie. Remember? Yes. In Indiana. Yes, I do. I mean, uh, Illinois. There. The yes. Illinois, Stokey, that's Illinois. That's right. Yeah, you yes. said overalls, and I'll never forget it. That's right. Back when I could wear them without looking like maternity overalls. I do remember that. Yeah, you even had a bib on them, you know. They did. They had a bib. That's right. Well, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed Outfest. I hope you enjoyed tonight. And we will see you very soon.